Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisan of all. And in this video we're using geometry nodes to create gradually increasing concentric circular patterns. Try saying that 10 times quickly. So this question was asked by a Patreon on Patreon Discord and they wanted to make this sort of paving but also this would be quite useful for circular roofing on something like a tower where you've got tiles and you need to increase them in each row. And this is quite an interesting problem and I've wanted to do a video on it for a while so that Patreon message really gave me a bit of a kickstarter to do this. So first of all we need a tile or slab to be our paving. I'm going to mostly focus on the paving but I'll talk about how we could do this with something like tiling towards the end. It's just a really minor change, it's all basically the same. Let's bring in a cube, let's G and then Y that off to the side and I'm just going to, I don't know, S on the Z, something like that. And we'll just scale it in a little bit here. So that's S and then X and then bring that in a tiny bit and then Control and A and apply the scale. But we're mostly not really dealing with this. This can be way off to the side. Let's just F2 and rename this stone. Now in reality you can make multiples of these so they're all different patterns if you want to do something like that so it's not all the same but that's not really the focus of the video it's how to do the concentric circles. So we're going to bring in any object, drag up to open up an extra window and then go into our geometry node editor. Click new, I'm going to press A and then the decimal on my number pad to zoom in and importantly we don't actually want the geometry here. But we are going to need this group input node in a bit, so we'll deal with that later. But what we do need is a repeat node. So let's bring that in, and you can see what we have here. Let's just drag that. Is that we've got to input some geometry normally, and then we've got this repeat zone, and everything inside this gets repeated. Let's just drag a little bit of space. So what I want to do is I want to put a circle here. So let's control A and we're going to bring in a circle. It's going to be a curved circle. I don't think that would really make a difference. Control and A and just bring in a join geometry, bring that there and then connect the curve to that. And that's sort of our cheaty way of doing this. Now because of the repeat, what we're going to do is if we up this to two, there are now two and three and four of these on top of each other but we need them moved further out. And the way this repeat node works is it moves through all these functions, does it once, and then for each iteration it's going to do it again. Let's just end to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So each circle goes through this process once again each time. And we can tell Blender to use this iteration value, so 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, and do something with that so that each iteration moves a different amount. So what we can do is just bring in a transform geometry node, plug that into the circle, so we've got that there, and then we want each iteration, which we've got coming out here, so at the moment there's two iterations, to control the scale. So what we can do is bring in a math node, so let's bring in some maths, and we just want to multiply this each time. So let's bring the iterations there, and we want to multiply this by, I don't know, two, so it gets two bigger, and in fact we can actually do it as one to begin with, and you can see this gets bigger, but we haven't got as many circles as we've got iterations. Well, that's because our first iteration doesn't count as one, it counts as zero. So let's just bring in another math node, and we're just going to add one each time. So now we've got as many circles as we've got iterations, and this is going to be important, otherwise we would theoretically get a point right in the center and some tiles on top of each other. Now what's good about this as well is we can use this add to increase the size of these two so we can have it moving further in and out. So that's quite nice. Or we could just set this to one so that we've got that always correct. And we could also, or consider putting in, let's shift and D and add on this side. So the multiplication is mostly there to make the circles further apart from each other. And then the add will make the circles further from the center. So we'll probably keep that as one and have these separated. So let's bring that down to just two to begin with and we'll start carrying on with this. Now the main thing that I had as an issue is that we've got this resolution and this resolution is going to be how many points there are around the outside of each of these circles. And with the way tiles work, because they're going to be a fixed size, we can see our tile all the way over here, we're going to end up, let's just pin this so it doesn't turn off, we're going to need more on each of these concentric circles and luckily we can deal with that because we've now got an iteration number. So we're also going to add one for each of these iterations because otherwise we end up with zero 
and then we're going to have this value as the resolution and you're going to notice it goes down to three because at the moment that's too low so we're going to again need to multiply this so let's just bring that up and now you can see what's happening we've got let's bring this up to three so we've got three then we've got the second iteration has got six then this iteration has got nine because it's the third iteration and so on so this sort of seems to work we're very likely to have this number much higher than three overall and once again we're probably likely to need to add something on at the end so let's just drag that out shift and d and put that in there so we can add something to it if we need to we'll put that to zero for now now at the moment i want the middle to start with i don't know let's say somewhere like eight so that we've got that nice and round to begin with and i think this is definitely too small to begin with so let's up that and make that somewhere out here now this is going to depend on the design of our tile so let's bring in our tile now now that we've got all this geometry we can shift and a an instance on points put that in there and everything's going to disappear because we're not instancing anything let's drag that up so we've got some space i'm just going to grab my stone drag it in so that we've got our object and drag that into let's just zoom in so we can see it drag that into the instance you can see now we've got all of these tiles coming in but they're all rotated in a horrible way but we can sort this out because this is made of circles so if i shift a and bring in a tangent we've got our curved tangent as a piece of information and we just need to bring it into our rotation so let's just drag this up and we're going to need to align rotation to vector Ooh, and that should go in the vector not in the rotation and let's drag that up there and you can see we're starting to get a little bit better but we need to work out what we need to do this on probably that one and that should actually work fine and we just need to rotate this round so let's just rx180 and control and a and apply the rotation and now we've got everything pointing inwards there we go and it's basically that simple we're pretty much done at this point that's all we really needed now we just need to fiddle around with some of our values for example we need more in the middle so somewhere there but then multiplying a bit less as we go around so there that looks fine then we can add to where our first circle is that's actually probably all right and then we're going to multiply this up so the gap's enough there we go and with that we might play around with some of these other bits as well but that looks about right maybe actually a bit less to begin with and then multiply up but you can see how much control we've got over this and now to add to my number of circles i just go to the iterations and just add look how easy that is it's beautiful we can just check these if they work and they are just about working we might need to reduce slightly on this multiple so let's go to about there but there we go you can see this works really well now to create this paving as wide as we want and as always with geometry nodes we can bring each of those values into the group input node and that's going to allow us to control this from the modifier panel without going into our geometry nodes and as normal we can rename them to whatever we want to rename them i think i've covered that enough times now that doing this again is just going to be a bit repetitive and boring at this point so now we can control everything that we need to from here we can make that more we can add to the spacing let's just undo that because it was good add to the addition and then same with the multiples and then same with the addition if we want to so there we go that's how we're going to create this now i did mention doing this for something like roofing and we can do exactly the same thing we're just going to reuse this transform section but this time we're going to be using the translation part so let's just make some space here let's drag that down i'm going to end to make me some more space here all we we'll would do is select these shift and d bring them up We've got the iteration going into our value there and then we just need a combine x y and z node let's drag that in there and then we need to bring this value into the z axis and we've got that so for this we'll need to change the multiple into a minus and then once again we'd need to bring these values lower we'd want to have our multiple being less so our spacing multiple let's bring that in there and then we just need to rotate around our tile so let's just go into vertex mode in fact let's just g and bring this over here so we can see what this is doing 
but let's bring down our spacing multiples. Let's just get this so we can see it. So we can bring down our spacing multiples there, bring down our number of tiles so that they're not overlapping anymore. Select that, go into vertex mode, A, R, and then X, and we can create, there we go, our tiles, if that's what we want our tiles to look like. Now we need to change the multiples here, potentially, but once again, we've got loads of control over these settings, so it's just a matter of fiddling around with them, the multiples and the additions, to make this work and fit as you want it to, and to control where the tiles are in relation to one another. But you get what we're doing with these tiles and how this would work. I think this transform is too big as well, so let's just bring that down slightly. So let's just bring that down slightly so they're a bit more overlapping. But you can see what we're doing and how this would also work for creating tiling that we have going down and once again we can just up our iterations to make more so that we've got our turret tiling so there we go that is our way to create our potential paving or tiles on a round surface like a tower so hopefully you found that useful if you did please hit that like button it really helps out I'll be adding the file of this to the patreon I'll do that for the paving as that was the request from the patreon member but as you can see, it's really easy to modify this, and hopefully you can go away and have some fun with geometry nodes. Have a great day, guys.